thank you. So anyway, my dad's mad at me at the minute. Honest to God, he's really pissed off. And because I gave up a thriving career to do this for a living, and he doesn't understand why. Before I did this, I worked at Sainsbury's Denton for six years. <laughs> Honestly, you're laughing, but it was the best job I ever had. I was the best checkout chick you'd ever seen in your life. The queues to my checkout were longer than the queues to get in here tonight, which is disappointing. And I think it's because the old biddies really love me. I had regulars like Doreen. She'd come in every Wednesday at 10 a.m. at like clockwork after been to doctors being a hypochondriac. And we'd just have the best banter. She'd be like, oh, Stephen, who've you been shagging this weekend in the gay village? I'd be like, Dory, <laughs> your son. Um... <laughs> no. Well, you've got to be honest with the elderly, innit? You don't want them to die on a lie. It's bad karma. <laughs> But I've got to tell you, right, my favourite thing, I just love Northern women, me. I love Northern women. Like, I went on holiday last year, my parents, for the first time in a decade, and it was not the right thing to do. And it was the whole fucking family as well. Aunties, uncles, cousins, babies. It was a fucking nightmare. And I learned so much. Like, old people, they love to book a flight for six o'clock in the morning so you don't waste a day. Uh... <laughs> And then they like to get to the airport two hours before because the internet told us to. So I'm coming home from the nightclub three o'clock in the morning, my contact lens on my eyebrow, I'm covered in jizz and shame. Um... <laughs> and then they put me in a taxi to the airport. But I learned a lot about old northern women on that holiday. Old northern women, they love a bargain and they're not afraid to discuss it either. Like, my mum came out one day in this bikini and I was like, Wendy, that bikini is beautiful, it really accentuates your curves. She went, Tesco, £12. Uh... <laughs> Doesn't go anything. Mum, these new plates are nice, 25% off Sainsbury's. It's like, I don't want a price check, take the fucking compliment. Like, <laughs> how was your meal at the weekend? Three courses, £12. <laughs> Honestly, she loves a bargain so much. When Martin Lewis comes on this morning, she gets a wide on. Um... <laughs> I love this lot, I'm just picturing my mum's fanny now. <laughs> And I will say, though, I will say what I love about that, what I love about talk, because I worry about talking about sex or sexy things on stage, especially as a gay man, because the stereotype of gay man is that we're all promiscuous. And I'm not promiscuous in the slightest. Like, I've only ever had sex with five men, and it wasn't consecutively. It was over the period of, like, four days. Uh, <laughs> very busy Easter. Uh, <laughs> But I think sex is the one thing we all have in common, like, regardless of class, gender, sexuality. It's the one thing we all have done or will do at some point in our lives, unless you're Anne Widdicombe. And <laughs> that's just a fact. That is just a fact. And we should be talking about it, because actually, STIs in this country are actually on the rise. And I blame the schools. Honestly, I've got to blame the schools, because sexual education is terrible, isn't it? Like, when I was in school, we got taught how to put a condom on a banana. So then when I came to have sex for the first time, I put condom on a banana, had sex with a guy and got chlamydia or Anyway, <laughs> you were clapping, I had it. Um... <laughs> And I, I honestly think as well, like, I think sex is one of the funniest situations I've ever been in, honestly. I think it's dead funny because of all the logistics that's going on with sex, isn't it? Like, can we be honest? Are we friends now? Yes. Thank you. Right. But I've got to tell you, it is the noises we're all making during sex that really make me laugh. And laughing and blowing someone is hard. Like, ha <laughs> And last year, I properly united nations, I did, because I went out my very first middle-class man. His name was John T. He lived in Clapham South and he had a champagne fridge. And <laughs> I shouldn't have let him go, really, but he was a bit older than I am. He was 45 and I wasn't sure if we were dating or if I was being groomed. And... <laughs> I've got to tell you, right, middle-class point-of-no-return noises are the funniest thing I have ever heard in my life. Like, honest to God. Do we have any middle-class in? <laughs> Not admitting it now, fuckers! <laughs> right. But we, you are correct. We're going to do a bit of role-play and I'm going to reenact Jonty's moment for you. Um, so you lot are going to play the role of me. You're Stephen, the blower, right? And I'm going to play the role of Jonty, the blowee. And... <laughs> because I just want you to hear what I went through so you know that I'm a fucking hero. Uh, <laughs> so, so this is me receiving an amazing blowjob. I'm John T, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darling. Oh, darling. Oh, darling. Oh, yes, darling. There, darling. There, darling. There, da there, there, there. Yes, yes. Oh, darling, right there, darling. Keep doing what you're doing, darling. Darling, darling, there, darling, there, darling, there, darling. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, darling, there, darling, 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 darling. 
Thank you, darling. <laughs> so much for having me. It's been a dream. Evan Stevens, see you soon. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Oh, you're so nice. You're very attractive. Uh, <laughs> very fair. I just heard your bottom go. <laughs> um, <laughs> Normally, when I start a show, I like to find out my demographic right, but I was doing a show in Glasgow recently, and I went out there, and I was like, where are my gays? And this voice at the back of the room just went, Dead! Um, <laughs> and I'm trying to be a bit... Do we have any single people in? Yeah, just this side. A lot of ladies. All the men are too shit-scared to say yes. <laughs> are you single? Yeah, where was your chair? Because you're very... Where do you live? <laughs> you're from Glasgow. Where do you live now? Yeah. yeah. Do you have a postcode? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, no, but honestly, and I, last year, I was very negative about being single. I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to die alone. I'm going to die ever so alone. Whereas this year, I'm trying to be a bit more positive about things. So instead of saying that, I'm like, oh, I'm going to die independently. Um, <laughs> it is a choice and it is mine. Thank you. <laughs> And it is, don't get me wrong, like, I have had a boyfriend before, of course I have, I'm not that hideous. And his... <laughs> Thanks. And his... <laughs> not one person object is, fuckers. <laughs> and his name was Matt, and we were together for three years, between the age of 16 and 19, and we had to end up breaking up, because Matt ended up going into the Navy, and then he came out straight, which is the wrong way round. <laughs> and, and it is, it's so hard nowadays to meet people, isn't it? And it's particularly hard to meet people in the gay community, because the gays have all gone very superficial. They have, they've gone very superficial. Because they all want a fuck Thor now. They do, they want a fuck Thor. They want the perfect tan, the perfect six-pack, the big dick. And I'm just not shallow in that way. I'd rather know what someone earns. <laughs> and I am an old romantic, so all I want from life is a relationship like my parents, because they've been together forever, because they're brother and sister. And... <laughs> Obviously, that's not true, you guys. I'm too attractive for that to be true. Five toes each foot, thank you. <laughs> no, but I think the reason they've lasted so long is because they still really make each other laugh. Like, my mum refuses to wear a bra because we're council. And no, she does. She's always like, why do I need to wear a bra, Stephen? I'm like, to keep your nipples off the gravel, bitch. <laughs> it's your future. Um... <laughs> I must say as well, I must say, my dad in particular, my dad's never had a problem with a gay thing, even though he absolutely should have. Uh, no, he should, but he's, and if anything, he's only like guilty about asking like daft questions. Like my sister's getting married this year. And he said to me, he said, Stephen, when your sister gets married this year, are you gonna go on the stag or the hen? And I'm like, um, I'm gonna go on both because I'm fucking fun. Uh, <laughs> But ladies, I do prefer going on the hen. I think you nail it. The boys go to walk about. Not for me, thank you. Um, the ladies have the decency to go abroad. And it always starts at the airport, doesn't it? It always starts at the airport, trying to get your inflatable dick through security. <laughs> You're gonna have to deflate that, sir. It's my real dick, it's my real dick. <laughs> Fucking wish, man's like an outy vagina. Uh, <laughs> this is why I'm not on BBC Two, innit? <laughs> And what I love, <laughs> what I love, what I love the most about going on the hens, because last year we went um, to my friend Gina's hen, we went to Barcelona, and we did Barcelona. And I fucking loved it. It was the best time I had. And what I love about getting women on their own away from the men is you really open up about sex. And I'm fascinated about sex, especially straight sex. I've never done it before. I mean, I did fingers one once, but that's a different conversation. I know. <laughs> Honestly, I know. It was like putting your hand in a shredder. Ow! Um, <laughs> So how you put your dick in there is beyond me. <laughs> no, but I'm on this hen. I could ask me friends anything. And I said to me friend Louise, I was like, what is it like for a man to go down on you? Do you know face to poussoir? And... <laughs> Honestly, I was fascinated. I was Because I've never known. I was like, what's it like to face plant a fanny? And she said to me, she said, Stephen, I want to be honest about this. She went, sometimes it's amazing. It's the most incredible sensation you'll ever go through. And other times it's like a pig searching for truffles. <laughs> And after she said that, do you know what I did think? If you flung a Ferrero Rocher up there, I'd go in afterwards. 
all the women really love that because they know it's true and all the men are like, no, we don't, Stephen, we're very fucking tender. <laughs> Where are the straight men out of interest? <laughs> yeah, I just want you to know, I think your lifestyle choices are disgusting, unnatural and God hates you. <laughs> Not nice, is it? Not nice. That's what we go through. You guys have been amazing. Thank you so much. Get home safe. See you soon. Thank you.